For the correlation, uh, I just give a brief introduction about uh, how the principle is, uh, how, we, um, how, how it works. So for correlation, uh, usually the signal of two sensors is used which are placed uh, on two accessible spots of a section of a pipeline where you assume the leakage is in between. And the correlation result is always a distance which is shown, which is that factor for you to know exactly the position of where the leak can be found uh, to excavate at that position and repair the damage. Uh, the correlator only needs the parameters as a pipe material, the diameter and the length uh, of the section in order to calculate the correct distance. Okay, these are the main products we offer for correlators. Uh, so you see here the local 400, local 200 PC, which is our core correlator. Uh, our best performing uh, correlator together with local 100. Uh, local 100 is a built-in correlator, stationary equipped inside uh, water test vans, for example, uh, but it also uses a software on a PC to um, yeah, run the correlation program. Okay, together with a correlator, you always need transmitting stations. We call it MB, measuring boxes. Uh, the newest development in FAS is the MB6. Uh, we have them with us today. Uh, we will show you the main function of them too. Uh, so uh, you also know about the newest products. Um, yesterday we showed you already the BD noise loggers. The BD noise loggers are also capable of uh, correlating a signal between uh, two loggers. Uh, with the noise logger you can actually uh, correlate between multiple sensors, but like uh, the correlation is always uh, only a two-point correlation. So if someone tells you uh, they can do uh, multi-point correlation, it's not true. Uh, multi-point correlation means, okay, they have a few sensors uh, deployed in the network and they can correlate the signal from this sensor with this sensor, from that sensor with that sensor. So this is uh, the multi-point correlation uh, competitors often talk about. So basically our correlator is also a multi-point correlator if you want to see it like this. For example, if you have the yellow, red and blue MB6, you can have three points and you can correlate always two signals between uh, two boxes. And the noise loggers, of course, they have as many loggers you want to uh, join in a group of correlation in order to uh, yeah, calculate the correlation. How the correlator works, so you see it here in this little uh, nice uh, picture. You have the two sensors uh, placed on accessible spots. You assume that the leakage is somewhere in between, but you don't know exactly on what distance it is and uh, the signal which is caused or the noise which is caused by the um, water excavating, uh, escaping from the leak, uh, this signal travels then from the leak position towards sensor A and sensor B. And as the leak is not exactly in the middle, there is a time deviation of the signal traveling to sensor A and sensor B. And this time deviation, which is this factor, uh, which is calculated by the correlator, uh, this factor is then being accounted in the equation you see here above. Uh, in the end, uh, what tells you the correlator is a distance. And the distance is the equation of the total lengths between the two sensors, A and B, that needs to be known by the correlator as parameter I introduced. Uh, also, it needs to have the pipe material and dimension. And then those two factors influence the sound velocity of the pipe material. And together with the velocity of the sound, 
uh, you then, and the delta t, you get the distance which is then shown as the result of the correlation. Um, yeah, I will go uh, further introducing a little bit more about sound velocities because this is a very important uh, key factor for the correlator to tell you um, or to, to run a correlation. You see here the different sound velocity of uh, different materials. Um, the best material always is uh, steel, stainless steel pipes, uh, where the signal propagates very, very uh, quickly. Uh, and therefore also the signal runs a very long distance until you won't hear it anymore. So often on steel pipes, you can hear leaks even in a kilometer or one and a half kilometer distance and uh, the sound is very good uh, propagated. The worst material you see is a polyethylene. A PE material is very soft and you can generally say uh, the harder ma the material, the more and faster the noise propagates. Uh, so this is about the sound velocity and the same is for the sound propagation um, on the pipe. Um, yeah. The sound velocity is uh, in the correlator program already uh, inside, so you don't need to worry about it. You only need to tell the correlator these two parameters, pipe material and dimension, and the correlator will uh, show you the correct flow velocity, uh, sound velocity uh, in the table um, in the correlation, in the correlator. <coughs> okay. Can we now start them? Okay, uh, you don't hear us very clearly, I hear. No, there was a request for a higher volume. Okay, maybe maybe you need to increase your volume on your uh, tablet or phone uh, in order to hear us better. I can't. Uh, uh, turn up the volume here. Uh, maybe I go to the microphone of my personal computer where I run this presentation. Maybe now it's better. I don't know. I, I can't hear me. Uh, otherwise, we would get uh, uh, coupling feedback. Um, I guess that it's better now. OK, perfect. All right. Um, if we talk about uh, sound velocity, we also um, can directly go into the details of uh, checking the sound velocity of pipes. Uh, sometimes, like I said, uh, the sound velocity is already inside the correlator, which can't be changed or accessed for the normal user. Um, but you always can adjust the sound velocity uh, manually when you have typed in those two parameters inside the correlator always can tip on the um, sound velocity and you can change it manually. Um, or what is also possible, you can check the sound uh, velocity uh, automatically with the correlation uh, function inside the local 200 PC or local 400. I will show you later also uh, on the real uh, situation how this works. But basically the, um, the, the way how you uh, proceed, the procedure, um, how to do it, uh, checking the sound velocity is uh, you have sensor A and sensor B. Um, again, I will show you my laser pointer. Uh, so you have sensor A and sensor B. Um, and you don't know if the sound velocity in between the two sensor is correct or not. Because maybe you, you went to the position, the correlator told you the leak uh, is, and uh, you found out the uh, geophone uh, is three, four meters, the maximum intensity is uh, further away from the position the correlator showed you. And then you can assume that uh, this sound velocity of the pipe section you're measuring on 
is not correct. Therefore, you can follow this procedure to open up an hydrant or artificial leak outside of the boundary of A and B. It doesn't matter if it's uh, uh, outside of A or outside of B. It matters just to be outside of the section. Okay, and this sound or this uh, artificial leak needs to be louder than the original leak sound. Therefore, you need to turn off uh, on the the volume, the water flow, uh, quite high. And uh, then the correlator runs, or you, you run a correlation, and with the local 200 PC, it's only a simple button to press, uh, adjust acoustic sound velocity. Uh, with the local 400, you only press and hold a recording button, and uh, then the sound velocity is adjusted to this section of the pipeline. I have to say it only averages the um, the low velocity, uh, the sound velocity. That means uh, if you have different sections within this section of the pipeline, for example, some um, repair was already carried out on this section and they uh, fit in a PVC section. The rest of it is uh, metallic pipe, a ductile or something else, um, and if you then run this uh, sound velocity um, adjustment, then you will um, just get the sound velocity averaged on the complete section. <clears throat> so it won't tell you if there, you can guess already uh, on the sound velocity in the end, for example, if someone already repaired a section of this section <laughs> and um, didn't uh, fill in or update the maps uh, and forgot, and you still have the information that it is all ductile material. But if it would be really just ductile, the sound velocity would be much higher than the one the correlator showed you in the adjustment. All right. Uh, let's go further. This is uh, just uh, a slide showing how uh, wrong materials are causing uh, wrong measurements. Uh, so this is uh, here in this case, an error of almost 21% if you have a section of only two meters of repair uh, on a pipeline which is in total uh, 100 meters length, all right? So therefore, it's quite important to tell the correlator exactly the, the right materials, the right dimension, and always uh, follow the um, procedure of piping in the materials, starting from sensor A, which is our red measuring box, towards sensor B. Uh, but I will show you later on in the real demonstration uh, how this is done. Okay, some uh, um, some uh, game, I would say, uh, for you to uh, guess uh, where the leak is on this ring pipeline. Uh, so we carry out a measurement here between these two positions. Uh, then we change the position of uh, transmitter A. Uh, you see almost the same uh, frequencies appearing. So this is not the correlation result. This is only about frequencies, uh, but it also already gives you an indication uh, on uh, the frequencies where uh, could be the leak. The background of it is that uh, low frequencies, they travel long distances, high frequencies only travel short distances, and therefore as closer you are to a leak, you will have more influence of high frequencies. Okay, and uh, in this example you will see uh, that it doesn't change a lot if we switch the position of uh, measuring box uh, A, the red one, but it changes a lot if I switch the measuring box B on this position. 
I switch again the red one and you see the peak of the main frequencies is somewhere in the middle. And now you can guess where the leak is. Um, also here, if you change it uh, to this position, uh, the frequency is reducing again, going to the lower part. And uh, yeah, question, where is the leak? Um, we will see. Of course, it's between these two position uh, where you have uh, the maximum frequencies in the FFT bus, so your transformation, the um, frequency distribution picture of a correlator. Another example, which is uh, always an issue is correlation. Uh, a correlator is a leak finder, yes, but leak finder uh, is not the right expression. Uh, I would rather say it is a sound finder. So it finds you the position of the maximum sound inside a pipeline. And uh, therefore, sometimes a correlation result uh, can be wrong. Even you have a very sharp peak, a very nice correlation. Um, but when you dig, you find a dry hole. Why that? You will see in this example here. Um, you run a correlation. This is now a real correlation picture, not the frequencies anymore, like shown in the pictures before. Uh, you have a section of 101 meter 0.3. Uh, so the correlation shows you the leak is exactly in the middle. You have a very nice peak, and uh, you say, Nice, I go there, dig. No, don't do that. Uh, carry out further measurements which, if possible, the position of uh, one of the measuring boxes can carry out another correlation. You see now the picture of the second correlation when you switch the B to position uh, in the middle on this uh, house connection. Um, then the correlator shows you again, the leak is just right on the measuring box six, uh, blue, sorry. Again, this would confirm the leak is right on this position. Okay, uh, you switch again the correlator, uh, the, the, the accelerometer inside the house, run a correlation, and again, it shows you the leak is right here where it uh, plops up. But <clears throat> also if you change A, it doesn't change, right? Uh, you run another correlation and you see it's still here at point uh, where the red transmitter is placed. Um, but in real, uh, is it here? Question? No, it's not there. What happens? Um, just uh, some idea to further investigate. We have here some of our other equipment where you can further confirm if this leak is really on that position the correlator shows. Uh, always a good idea is to uh, evaluate or to confirm through a geophone on the position. Uh, probably with the geophone you would also hear a quite good noise here on this position. Uh, a, the best way is Fraser gas, pipe mic, also uh, nowadays a very good uh, or the best solution to pinpoint the leakage. Okay, in this case, like you see, the leak is somewhere on the house connection, but because you have a reduction and assume the leak is quite big on the house connection and the reduction from the main pipe into the uh, house connection is so tight that it creates a very, very high reduction noise of the flow and the leak sound is only uh, more silent than re this reduction noise. Because if the leak is like very big, you have a high flow, and this high flow causes then here on that position, uh, this reduction noise and the correlator shows you, of course, it's a leak finder, but in real, it's a sound finder. That's my uh, main uh, yeah, thing I want to tell you in this presentation. So we are already through with the theory part. 
Uh, now we go into the um, uh, demonstration. We will start showing you the MB6, um, how to set it up. We have here with us uh, the professional version. All right. This is the new, brand new model of uh, MB6 with me. Uh, you see it has uh, three connection points, one here on the side, uh, which is the sensor connection. It's an IP68 connector, uh, quite uh, nice to connect. Uh, only a bayonet uh, switch to connect it. You have here the plug for plugging in the headphone for doing, uh, getting the signal um, directly on site if you want to check the signal. You have uh, the antenna connector and here on the top you have the recharger. Okay, inside the menu, uh, I just switch it off for you to see how it's switched on. Okay, uh, to switch it on, you only press here on this button. Uh, it will start immediately. Um, now we are in the professional uh, measuring box and the professional measuring box has additional features, additional function. I will explain it to you. In the standard version, you have uh, the opportunity to automatically or manually uh, amplify the signal from the sensor. Sensor is uh, here on the back. Uh, when you place it on the, on the pipe or on uh, the place you will then see here in this picture the frequency which is picked up um, but yeah in the standard version you can amplify automatically or manually you can also do that uh, in the professional version if i click on it you will see then a number appearing this is a pre-amplification factor you can set if you increase this number you will see here the graph increases that means uh, some of you already are used to measure with mb3 or mb4 mb3 is also capable of adjusting the pre-amplification manually i leave it on automatic you can reduce also the noise if it's a too high signal for example um, i recommend to leave it in automatic so you don't need to worry about uh, the amplification the second icon here on the right where I put the cursor is the frequencies uh, or the filters of the MB6. Uh, so we have uh, five filter options. I start with the broad filter or no filter, let's say. You see here, I have now frequencies from uh, zero to 5,000 Hertz, uh, which are displayed and transmitted through the radio to our central unit the correlator either local 200 pc or local 400. okay if you uh, press again you are now in the low filtering menu uh, now we have a high pass filter of zero hertz and the low pass filter of 300 hertz so it's measuring really in a very low frequency range the next filter step you have is uh, between 200 and 800 hertz, uh, which is a medium-sized uh, metallic pipe uh, is good to measure in this range. You always can confirm if the sound you are picking up with the sensor is in between the boundaries of your two filters. If this is not the case, if you have a peak left or right of these two uh, small um, triangles, then you should switch the filters. You should change the filters to also get this signal to the correlator for processing. Next filter uh, you can choose is the, um, again, a medium uh, uh, filter range between 600 and 1,400 Hertz. Uh, next one is very, very high filter. Uh, between 1,000 and 4,000 hertz. You always see it's leveling out new if you change the filter. If I go now on uh, the broad filter, you will also see the intensity of the signal while I'm talking is increasing a lot because I also have very low 
frequencies in my voice and therefore the signal is much higher. If I cut out these signals, the signal also will reduce here on the box. Okay, in the professional version, you not only have the opportunity with these five filters, but you also can switch. Uh, now this icon, I just quickly explain, is leveling out new. For example, if you uh, switch the position of the measuring box and the sensor, you put it on a new position or maybe uh, something changed on the hydraulics, meaning you opened or closed the valve, uh, then you can click on this icon and it will recalculate the amplification and the noise level here. Okay, and in the professional version, you have again, uh, this four more function to the standard version. These two numbers here is the pre-amplification, it's the same as uh, this factor here on the A on the automatic. Uh, if you switch on manual, or if I go now in here, uh, it still writes here automatic, but in real, um, if I'm going now onto the automatic and access, sorry, access this menu, you will see now, doesn't change here, it's strange. But all, this, is the same, this is the same factor, right? It's pre-amplification. And the pre-amplification means um, it's the signal directly coming from the sensor, going into the measuring box and uh, being processed then. And the second, the second number here, the 230, is the uh, after amplification. So that means after processing of the signal, after filtering. So now I'm here uh, in the full frequency range uh, and therefore uh, the signal which is after uh, the, the radio or being transmitted out of the radio is quite high, right? So you have the opportunity to pre-amplify and to after amplify, after filtering. Before filtering, after filtering amplification factor. All right. And uh, another feature in the professional version is here the uh, two filter um, you can set. It is really a very, very precise tool to achieve very good results um, if you know how to set the filters in this measuring box. So the measuring box transmits only a signal which is uh, needed for carrying out a correlation. And uh, if you click on one, you can change the filters. So now I have on the uh, high pass filter, 50 Hertz steps, and you can really uh, correct the frequencies and the filtering according to what you like to have. So it's uh, freely selectable, similar to our AquaM300, where you can uh, have, I don't know how many, hundred different filter options. So it's really, really a nice tool to um, just transmit the frequencies which are important for you to measure on. All right, that's all for the MB6. We will later on go to the test track which is just in our backyard and we will uh, put them on and we will run the real correlation. I will now take my laptop here and uh, I will go to uh, the local 200 PC and I will again share my screen uh, to show you the main functions of the local 200 PC. All right, that's the central unit of the local 200 PC. I'm using here uh, the USB port to connect the box. You have here a bar with icons uh, to indicate that the box is operating, uh, battery status, and only a simple LED to show if the box is operating or not. To make it work, you need to connect the laptop to it through the USB, what I have done just now. 
and uh, you start on your desktop the correlator um, program which is opening up them and when you have done that the correlator will come on live so you see that here on the two uh, LEDs which show uh, the signal of A and B uh, it's not yet the signal received. This is the radio reception here, uh, the three LEDs, A, B, C. So you see here they are switched off. That means I just turned off the uh, blue transmitter. Uh, otherwise, I would uh, see the signal uh, and the LED lighting here in the uh, box. Okay, on the correlator itself, uh, you always need to, if you connect the new laptop with a new uh, with a program on it uh, you need to go on to the settings and uh, communication and choose the right port so if you say uh, your correlator doesn't work um, it's okay we just turned off, turned off the video ah okay but you can leave it on so you have a dash cam okay yeah sure um yeah just some clarification uh so on the com port uh it's important otherwise the box won't detect your laptop when it's connected to it and uh, therefore you need to choose it if you have chosen the right com port before that you always need to install the uh, right driver for the com port Otherwise, you won't have any options here on the communication to choose. All right. Then if you want to uh, add uh, some uh, access functions, you need to go on a new measurement, which is shown here. You can also open up an old measurement if you have saved some. Uh, I now want to create a new measurement. Now you see you have uh, more options available which you can press you can choose already uh, filter functions you can increase you can decrease filters uh, high pass and low pass filter accordingly you can amplify the channels a and b manually this you always can do automatically here on these uh, functions you see here automatic amplification now I don't have any signal because I didn't put out our measuring boxes just now. Um, I will do that in a second. So we have a click then here on the automatic amplification and it will choose the, a good amplification so that the correlator can work with the signal. I can explain already the signal should be always somewhere in the middle not too high, not too low for the correlator to calculate you the um, a good uh, correlation. Then also for the high pass and low pass filter, you don't need to change anything. You have here the play button in start measurement, or you have also the option of automatic measurement. On the automatic measurement, you uh, don't, the, the correlator won't take the settings you have done here in the filter area. It will recalculate uh, filters according to the algorithm which is programmed in the correlator. Uh, TransAuto, a very nice function for busy roads and uh, something competitors don't have. They always run a correlation even with ambient sounds. We at FAST, we decided that we don't want to have disturbing noises in our correlation result. Therefore, we have this trans auto function. It will stop for the moment when you have a louder noise than the leak sound. The leak sound, of course, is always the sound of the um, minimum intensity because the leak sound will constantly be there. Uh, ambient noises come and go, cars come and go. Therefore, uh, this information is not important for the correlator, but the minimum sound is important to have. Average number is something you can make based on your experience. 
as more averages you want to calculate, as more time you need to wait uh, to have a finished result. Okay, um, I talked in my presentation about the, uh, the parameters the correlator needs to have. This you can set here in the measurement section. On the measurement section, you just double click on it and uh, you then see here popping up a new window which shows you uh, the pipe um, yeah, parameters. You type in uh, all the parameters you have. I would say now at this point, we go out to the test field. Uh, we will switch on our leaks on the test field. We bring out the measuring boxes. We switch them on and we come back into here and uh, we will run the correlation live with you. Okay, you see here our test field. Um, we have a PVC pipe where we will uh, connect the sensor to. Uh, I will switch off the measuring box uh, in order to level out new again. Uh, so I first put the sensors, I switch on the leak, and then you will see later on uh, the uh, value of the sound. This is our switch. We have about 3.5 bars, 3.6 bars. I switch on uh, leak number two on PVC. I will show you later on also how it looks like if you have two leaks on the same pipe. Now the leak is turned on. Uh, we are now switching on the measuring box and uh, seeing what value it will give you, give us while the leak is running. So you see already here in the low frequency filter area, we are on a noise level of uh, 90 around uh, you see also most of the frequency are within this uh, picture, but I will now, because this is PVC, very short se section, it's only uh, 38.5 meters. I will um, choose a different filter range um, just for you to see uh, how the picture looks overall. Uh, so it's really just here on the plastic pipe on the PVC in a very low uh, area. So it was correct to measure now on the low frequencies between zero and 300 Hertz. But you see also that there is a peak sometimes popping up out of the 300 Hertz. So maybe it's not the best filter settings. I can now go into the professional mode and I can open up the low pass filter and uh, say I want to measure between 0 and 500 Hertz. Okay, the same I will do with the blue measuring box, uh, which my colleague uh, Kurt will bring out at the far end of our test track, and uh, I will go already inside to show you uh, how I do the settings in our correlator. Now you see already here on the local 200 PC, the red signal is uh, turned on. That means I receive the signal from A. I can listen to it. If I switch it on, it's not really uh, very loud, but if you would connect here a headphone, uh, it's more audible than through the speakers. Now I need to wait until my colleague switch on uh, B. Now he switch it on. Uh, it's now indicating here that I receive also B. So everything is fine. I can click, go on to the uh, signal of B, which is not yet a nice signal. I guess it is still leveling out the signal and therefore I need to wait a little bit until B is fully uh, 
uh, operatable. Now I will go and I will need to tell the correlator what material I have here. So in this case, I only have one material, which is a PVC pipe. I have a length of 38.5 meters. I have a dimension of D and 80. And you see now the acoustic sound velocity is shown here uh, with 460 uh, pesos. Okay, now B's, B's on, you, you hear it probably. Signal is not very strong. Maybe I'm sheltered here inside our room a little bit, but you can hear now A and B. Okay, um, I apply this. Now I go here on automatic measurement. First, I go on automatic amplification in order to increase the signal, which is shown here. Uh, if you click, double click in this picture, you see the frequency distribution, which is nicely uh, on about 300 hertz, the same here. Now I go on uh, automatic measurement and the correlator now tells me uh, one moment, please. The program is calculating the optimal filter and amplification settings. If this is done, the correlator will uh, go and directly take measurements. You see already here, it switches some uh, frequencies. Uh, now it chooses to have a high pass filter of 200 Hertz, low pass filter of 156 Hertz, which is absolutely uh, not good. That means I don't have any signal. I don't know why it is doing this, uh, but still it shows you a result. Uh, quite in the middle. I will just board this measurement. Go on a new one. And I will definitely, my high pass filter should be uh, lower than the low pass filter. Otherwise, there is no signal to be processed with the correlator. Okay, you see already the boundaries of the algorithm of the correlator. Sometimes it's good to do this manually so i just did that uh, i also see that uh, channel b is too high amplified i reduce this a little bit in order to have enough uh, signal but not too much signal for the correlator to uh, operate i start again a measurement now a manual measurement and uh, you see now the correlation result becomes really, really nice. Uh, you see already with the first average the correlator took, it goes right on to the peak. It is showing you exactly the distance where the leak can be found, 11.5 uh, meter uh, from um, sensor B, and this is exact on the spot of it. So there is no um, yeah, issue with this result. Um, yeah, if you want to, I was talking about the sound velocities of the different pipe materials before. Um, if you want to adjust acoustic sound velocity, if you assume that this leak is not at 11.5 meter, but you found out with a geophone, the leak sound, maximum sound intensity is maybe at uh, 13 meters from B. Then you can uh, do what I have shown in our presentation before. You go and open up a washout or a hydrant 
out of the boundary of the measurement section and uh, you run the same correlation like we do now and you have here then the icon of adjust acoustic velocity as soon as the correlator is finished now i have here 50 averages so it takes quite a long time to stop but you see already with the first measurement it has pinpointed the leak exactly on the position and this result won't change as more averages are done but um, yeah when the correlator is finished you can then click here on this icon adjust acoustic velocity assuming now uh, the leak is not in between but outside of the boundary and if i click now on this icon uh, you see inside the acoustic in inside my parameter table the acoustic velocity is 460. if i click now here on adjust acoustic velocity the correlator will choose the leak b exactly on b closer as uh, the closer the leak is uh, to which measuring boxes it puts the boundary exactly onto the spot of it and if i go now into the table again you see it says now the acoustic sound velocity is not 460 but it is 1140. if you did that no problem if you want to change anything you just uh, type in a different parameter either dimension or uh, material then the acoustic velocity will change back to the factory set um, settings uh, now I didn't put apply, so it didn't take my changes. I need to click on apply. Now you see the correlator shows you again the good result. Okay, I will now go out to the test field uh, and switch on a second leak, which is right in the middle, and I will run uh, another correlation with the local 200 PC before we go back and uh, start working with the local 400. Yeah. So I switch now on uh, the second league on the PVC and uh, go back and uh, run the correlation again. And I do the same process. I need to click on new. Do you want to save? No, I've done this measurement hundreds of times. So I click on no. I change now the number of averages because I don't want to spend so much time waiting for the correlator to finish i click on start measurement and uh, wait uh, what the correlator is doing if you want to zoom in uh, the correlation uh, you always have the opportunity to click here on this uh, search icon now what is happening the correlator shows you always the sound with the maximum intensity. So even though I have two leaks, you see also I have two peaks here, uh, which might be not a leak, maybe a reflection, but in this case, it is uh, the second leak. Um, I will switch off the second leak in a second and run another correlation. So you will see then uh, this will disappear and I only have one nice peak uh, on this section again. But this is again a very good measurement. Uh, I have a nice peak at 18.10 meter. It's actually at 18.5. So everything is fine with uh, this result. So I now switch off the second leak. I click on new. I have again the signals. Now I see on channel B, I have a little bit low signal. Uh, that's the reason why because I uh, now I'm further away from uh, channel B towards the leak. Therefore, I need to increase the amplification. Okay, I run out another measurement. 
and the correlator showing you only one peak, one major peak, let's say. There's still some other smaller uh, things here. I can later on, if I finish with the correlation, I always can go into this section and I can click on the different other peaks and see uh, at which, which position uh, we have this. Now I need to wait. We are average uh, with 16. Now you see that Trans Auto sometimes turns on. Uh, it's just maybe my colleague who is hammering or doing something in the factory, so it will stop uh, during this small uh, event. Okay, now I finished with the measurement. I have very nice uh, peak, one peak. I also can click on uh, the second peak. I can change here and see at what distance it is to also go there perhaps and uh, confirm with the geophone if there is a sound or no. Uh, if I change something here, I always can go here on search maximum and it will jump back on the maximum peak of my correlation result. All right, that's uh, all for the local 200 PC. Now we will go and uh, we will live demonstrate the local 400. All right, local 400 has um, two antenna connections, A and B. The, this, this is actually a difference, I didn't tell you. Uh, on the local 200 PC, you only have uh, one antenna connection. It receives both channels on the same uh, antenna, but this one has two antenna connections, so it receives uh, the two uh, signals on two different uh, receivers. Okay, so you need to really connect the antenna, otherwise you won't be able uh, to receive the signal. The same with the MB6, of course, if the antenna is not there, this is often a problem. <laughs> uh, we get uh, from customers uh, correlator doesn't work but yeah often it's forgotten to screw on the antenna here we have a connector which is the same connector for the mb6 um, sensor so here you can directly connect the sensor from the mb6 uh, for example if one transmitter station, one MB6 is broken, you send it in for repair, but you still have some uh, work to do. So you can connect here uh, the sensor directly and use this as input and not through the antenna. But also you can connect any other sensor, for example, our uh, ground microphone or universal accelerometer or the test rod. Um, I will explain about that uh, features tomor in tomorrow's webinar uh, with our geophones. But Local 400 is a two-in-one device, so it's a correlator, mobile correlator, and a geophone in the same time. Geophone is same function than the AquaM 300. I don't go into the details of the geophone with the Local 400 because we will take uh, the new uh, the next webinar a webinar tomorrow with the AquaMs 300 uh, for this step. Okay, next uh, connector is for uh, the charging. So here you connect the, the charger for recharging the device. You always have this cap for um, plugging. So it has IP65. Uh, you can also uh, yeah, throw it in a in a small uh, pit and it will survive. It won't uh, drown. On this side <clears throat> here, we have uh, the headphone connector to uh, listen to the sound received either by the antenna or directly from the connector of the uh, sensor input. And the the last uh, connector is USB. The USB is for downloading files recorded from the correlator uh, to 
play them in our program. Uh, Local 400 is a PC software to uh, show these um, um, measurements then. Okay, to switch it on, you click here on the uh, on off button. Uh, you see here the analog signal from the measuring boxes A and B. Uh, you also see now they turned from red to green. That means I receive both signals from both measuring boxes, which is fine. Uh, I now I'm in the main window already. I can choose between correlation and I can choose uh, between uh, the correlation and ground microphone or geophone function. Uh, this icon is for settings and this icon is for if you have connected it with the USB to a PC, transfer data or even update a device on the firmware. Okay, I go just quickly into the settings because it's also important for you to do. You have here the settings of the time where you can set the time and date of the device. Now it's the correct, uh, no, it's not the correct. We are now at summertime. We have already passed three o'clock. Now I'm here at uh, uh, 14 o'clock. I just changed this quickly. It's just a minor thing, but uh, yeah, this is time and date. Language settings. You have uh, German, French, Italian, Portuguese, many other, even Chinese, English, Turkish. We also have other uh, languages, but these languages are not inside the, it's called EPROM of the device. And this EPROM, um, if you want to have another language, you just contact us and we can also achieve that and put it inside the EPROM and you will be able to load it here through this menu. Okay, uh, on off, this is uh, just, uh, often we also get uh, inquiries or uh, complaints from customers saying, the battery doesn't uh, last very long, it always switches off. Uh, this is an automatic function to preserve actually the battery. Uh, so this is turn off time if I don't do anything with the correlator for three minutes, it will switch off automatically. Then I have here illumination, uh, brightness of the display. Uh, of course, as brighter you choose the display, as uh, uh, more battery it consumes. So this is optimum, we figured out, still bright enough and uh, not taking too much battery. This man with the hat, is actually a function for the geophone uh, manual filtering. I will explain in tomorrow's webinar about that with the M300. This is uh, protection or hearing protection of your ear. Um, zero means it's switched off, three means it's very sensitive. It's in order, it's again a geophone function or a direct uh, uh, sensor connection function. If you have connected your uh, headphones, you want to protect your ear uh, in order when you, for example, place the sensor on a new position, it gives you a very, very loud noise. And uh, in order to um, yeah, preserve your, your hearing, you can set that on sensitivity and it will shut off the noise from the speakers, from the headphones in order to protect your ear. This is touchscreen uh, function. You can turn it on or off. Now I don't have any touchscreen feature. I only can navigate now with this dial here uh, and I can only activate it if I click on it. So this is the same function then with the finger, but only touchscreen is available if it's turned on, of course. Calibration and test is for calibration. The, if you figure out that if you press here and it uh, chooses the icon right here, then the touch screen is messed up. You need to recalibrate the menu. This is uh, factory settings. Often uh, the filters or uh, any other factors are messed up. You can just clear up measurement data, reset parameters. So everything is factory reset. And um, 
you don't have uh, uh, to worry about if you mess up something inside the settings. Uh, this is uh, the standard settings for the correlator to take the signal from A and B. You can choose, like you see here, all other options. If you have also a yellow transmitter, uh, you can also choose these options or a direct input from your sensor connector uh, if you want to use only one transmitter and the um, direct sensor input. This menu is frequency setting for the correlation. Uh, you can choose already uh, some frequency settings for the manual uh, correlation. I just uh, delete that. Here you have uh, the unit menu. You can choose between metric and imperial. Um, of course, here in Germany, we're using metric. Info is the info about the firmware, the latest software version of it sometimes required uh, when you have an issue we ask you to send this to check if there was an issue with this version or not then you have trans auto is the same function uh, like i show you on the local 200 pc zero means it's switched off uh, it will still continue with the measurement if uh, a car or any other ambient noise is louder than the leak noise Three means very sensitive. It will stop immediately if something is louder than the constant leak noise. All right, that's all for the settings menu. Now I go into the correlation directly. Uh, you see here the automatic function and you see the manual function and you see also data load. If you have uh, saved some measurement, you can directly go into here and load the measurement and you will directly be redirected in the main screen of the correlation. Um, the normal function of uh, normal users is always automatic. If you are an experienced uh, user, you can directly go on manual uh, mode, but also in the automatic function later on, if you have done the first calculation or correlation, you can also manually readjust uh, some parameters of the amplification and filter settings. But I will show you now only the automatic function. Uh, this is again the parameter the correlator needs. Uh, you choose again starting from A to B with the different pipe sections. If I would have now different materials I need to uh, type them in. I in this case have only one material um, we tested before that everything works. So we have the same parameters on the local uh, 200 PC, uh, PVC uh, 38.5 meter. Okay, if you leave this menu, uh, click on the play button, you will be redirected into the main menu of the correlation. Now you will see in the automatic mode, the correlator will change the amplification of the two signal, which is the percentage, which is written down here. And it will start already calculating you the first result with filters it chooses uh, according to the algorithm. It now aborted and it starts again. You see here the number of averages. And uh, now it chooses a more narrow filter and it is recalculating on this uh, position. Maybe sometimes it aborts two, three times in order to get the nicest peak of the results. You see also now the correlator shows us uh, the leak is at 18.1 meter roughly, uh, which is uh, really the exact distance we are at 18.5 in real, so it's 40 centimeters uh, away from the real result. You also see the signal on uh, B, uh, A and B. Um, now the, the correlator stopped with an average of 50 um, measurements. You now can also directly 
change some settings if you want. You can either go here onto the parameters. If you figure out that something is wrong with the sound velocity, you can also change it in here. Uh, I don't want to do it now. Um, I'll leave it. Let me go back to the same menu, but you can change settings always afterwards again. Uh, and it's recalculating based on the result from the first correlation. You can also do uh, filtering if you uh, click on the filter icon on the bottom of it. You can also enable a headphone, which is actually a very nice feature uh, to uh, hear the direct input of the signal and to hear the change of the sound if you uh, widen up or narrow down filters on this um, menu here. Every time you have uh, readjusted filters, you click here on uh, reload and it will give you a new result based on the uh, new filter settings you have done here. Okay, now if I have done that and I want to keep these changes, you click here on this arrow, you will be redirected in the uh, main menu. Um, you can also readjust the um, amplification of the two sensors or transmitters A and B. In this case, it's uh, right uh, correct. Always some signal not too high, not too low for the correlator to process. I can uh, take this down a little bit so we have fairly enough uh, the same signal on both A and B. Uh, if you click now on the play button again, it won't recalculate you automatic uh, the filter settings and amplification again, like it has done in the first run. But in the second run, it will keep all my settings I have done in here and it will uh, run the correlation with these settings I have just chosen. And you see, it didn't change much of the result. It still stays on the same position. It will run a correlation of um, about 50 measurements and then it will stop. All right, you also see sometimes the blue transmitter is uh, lost, it's crossed. You also see it here on the LED then, it's uh, getting off. We are now inside the building, the box is placed uh, about 100 meters behind us. Uh, so if I would uh, want good signal, I would need to go out of the building in order to get a good signal. Okay, if you want to do acoustic uh, sound velocity calibration, uh, you need to um, press and hold this button. But before that, you need to go into the um, function of new peak finding. Um, if you have the peak outside of the boundary of the correlation section, which is normally the case when you have uh, uh, open the hydrant outside of A or a, a B, so the correlator will show you exactly the leak position on the side uh, where you opened the uh, leakage or the, the hydrant, so either close to A or to B. And uh, when you are inside, you press and hold this button until it beeps, and then the acoustic sound velocity is calibrated onto the new peak. Um, you can see uh, how this uh, behaves then in this menu. Then you see here a new acoustic sound velocity because the leak was quite in the middle uh, with our test. Um, now the sound velocity and the boundaries narrowed down uh, a lot and the acoustic sound velocity is now very, very high, which is of course wrong. So therefore, um, yeah, this is not the correct acoustic sound velocity. And you also see here the boundaries narrowed down uh, very, very shortly uh, so that now the leak is exactly on position of the measurement box A. All right, um, that's all 
for today's webinar.